Welcome to the webinar. So uh, I just switched on the camera for a moment, but during the presentation I will switch it off. Uh, so I basically just to say hi, and uh, I will see you at the end of the uh, webinar on the Q&A session again. So let me switch off my camera now, and I will start the uh, actual presentation. now. Welcome everybody to S4GA online webinar. Hope that you and your families are safe in those unusual times. My name is Lucas and today I will present uh, the topic that actually seems to have gained a lot of interest among the infrastructure, airport infrastructure community. I have seen over 1400 people have originally uh, signed in for the webinar. Well, we won't see the number here today joining that high, but still I think it's a record number in the S4GA history. So I think the control and monitoring subject is a very valid subject to uh, many of us. So warm welcome again to everyone who managed to find the time. Uh, and now, the topic exactly of this presentation is control and monitoring of S4GA airfield lighting. This will also be the first time when we will present the generation two of ALCMS from S4GA. So it's quite an exciting uh, time and quite exciting webinar and a privilege to make this presentation today for you. So let's jump into the agenda. Now, the presentation is intended to take about one hour today, um, including Q&A session. Maybe it will be one hour, 10 minutes, depends how many questions we'll have. Uh, and uh, what is this presentation going to be? It's, a, it's going to be partly a high level presentation explaining the concept of uh, S4GA wireless system. Why is it uh, so important? Because without understanding the system, uh, it's difficult also to understand how the ALCMS is working. So I will introduce this part. Um, partly, of course, sorry, uh, we'll go into the details of the um, ALCMS itself. How does it look like? What are the capabilities? Uh, so I hope you will have, and basically I hope you'll enjoy it. Now, uh, the aim for myself uh, is to have everybody to understand the major principles behind S4G CMS system and to align this knowledge with the knowledge that you, a lot of you will already have, is the knowledge about uh, conventional 6.6 .6 AMPS systems that are typically installed on the airports that you are working on. I'm always looking for questions, also the tough questions, please do not hesitate. Of course, all questions are welcome. And the plan is the simple. When I will be talking right now, and you have any question, just write it in the chat. And later after the presentation, I will uh, basically try to answer one by one. Uh, if I will be unable to do it, I will tell you to basically contact us later on, because for example, I will be missing some part of the technical explanation. Uh, so the flow of the presentation, shortly about this for GA for all the newcomers. Then I will immediately jump into the compliance. I'm not going to do a compliance analysis today, but I will do a, at least uh, aligning. And uh, so we are all on the same page when talking about the compliance for the uh, S4G uh, LCMS system. Then fundamentals of the uh, control in a wired and wireless so S4G uh, type of system. This is a very important point because it will define all the next. And then we'll go to basically explaining all the key components, hardware, software of the uh, system from S4GA. Talk a little bit about backup and integration with the existing uh, ALCMS systems uh, right now installed already for the wired systems uh, around the world. And q and such. Okay, let's go further. So I will start with who we are and what we do. Um, S4G designs, manufactures, and supplies 
a certified airfield lighting to civil and military customers worldwide. That's as easy as that, or as simple as that. Uh, S4GA is, a today, is today a global brand, leading the way in autonomous and solar AGL systems. This is what we do, solar and autonomous systems. Company has delivered at, at, until today over 125 projects in over 45 countries, so quite a portfolio. S4G originates from Europe, from Poland. This is where I'm located right now. So, what do you need to know about S4G if you would like to take it in simple terms? Very simple. S4G manufactures world safest runway lighting. And this statement will be partly explained in this presentation, but not in full because it's a big topic. But at least partly, I will try to attach this, uh, this statement. The company is government owned, which means that the company major shareholder is Polish state. So the stability of the company is out of the question. And um, I think this is the only company. This is the only company in the world um, that uh, actually has a state as a major shareholder. And that's a unique setup. The products uh, manufactured by S4G are always certified um, to comply with multiple, multiple uh, regulations. Of course, the most important are the aviation regulations, but not only. And these are really the three bullet points that are um, summarizing S4G. So, who do we serve, or basically, who are uh, our customers? So S4GA delivers for civilian airports, that's the first uh, picture on the left side, for the civilian and for the military um, customers, permanent, not temporary, but permanent, solar powered, entire AGL solutions. What I mean is that S4GA is capable of delivering um, full airside solution to a greenfield airport, and it will be uh, basically an autonomous powered solution. And we are speaking about a solution that is a permanent solution. So 365 days operating solely on uh, solar power. The, what are type of the customers or airports we are able to serve or we did already uh, from 800 meter private strip uh, of private owner somewhere on grass up to three and a half kilometer parallel runway uh, airport or airbase. We have done both. The second uh, market that we are serving is the middle picture here, is uh, mostly used by military, but not only, um, is a portable airport in a trailer. In fact, um, for the military, they serve as a remote type of operation, so the light can be even equipped with the NVG capability. And for the civilians, this type of solution is a typical emergency system. So uh, from the experience that I've seen, uh, international airport will purchase uh, a trailer of that type in order to secure the emergency situation that they may find themselves in for a temporary uh, for a temporary time until the major may, major wired solution is fixed. Now, the third type of the uh, of the applications that we serve is um, application for a backup system. That one in the right uh, top corner, and this is for the civilian airports, mostly for the civilian airports, for the major construction reconstruction works. A system that in, that is installed during the rehabilitation. So when you have a rehabilitation works, you need the system to, uh, you need the airport to operate. So you need the system that will uh, comply with the aviation regulation and it will support the airport operation during the rehabilitation works that can take up to several months. And this type of systems we also supply. The, the last market that we serve, uh, we do it with portable helipad mm, uh, lighting. I emphasize word portable. So we are actually very good in this type of product and we have lots of customers around the world. 
using our portable heli pass. So what do we do? We are good in the air site, autonomous air site um, solution. The one you will see uh, here is um, just a picture and all the air site uh, can be supplied uh, from S4G. And all controlled and monitored from uh, S4G uh, ALCMS system. Now, the topic of today's presentation, of course, is the um, control and monitoring system. So we start with a deep dive into the compliance. So now I will read one by one every single line and I will uh, try to explain. Now, of course, I'm joking. It is not possible. It's not possible probably to explain the compliance in not only one hour, but probably not only one day. I will just touch base on various um, regulations and regulatory framework uh, for the ALCMS, and I put it con in context to S4GA. Of course, this topic is huge, and we are very welcome to have a discussion or a conversation about it, but it's not going to be possible today within me speaking. But of course, questions are welcome uh, at any time. Now, what you can see from the table here, you'll see that uh, the major regulatory bodies uh, that are today um, in charge, I would say in charge, that are uh, recommending or regulating uh, ALCMS systems are ICAO and FAA. And here from the ICAO, you will see two documents. One is Annex 14, and the other one will be Aerodrome Design Manual Document 1957. Now, in, in reality, this is just, uh, I'm talking now about ICAO, uh, this is just an open enlarged. In fact, if you, if you look at the document itself, those two um, uh, chapters in uh, electrical systems, they maybe are in total one, one and a half page of regulations, but they were the first one. They were the first one uh, and uh, when we are speaking about ICAO, ICAO uh, did a preliminary work on, on the LCMS. ICAO has uh, structured and put in most, most, um, um, let's say, basic requirements for the system, addressable lights, response time, uh, monitoring. But uh, in fact, it's a very, very general um, requirements and uh, the true work which was done in order to clearly define the uh, requirements for the modern ALCMS is done by FAA and anyone who's uh, working with the subject will know the document, the advisory circular 150. I think I'm not going to read the name, but uh, in short, the L890 regulation, uh, where in fact FAA prepared a document that has over 80 pages detailing the ALCMS control system requirements. And these, and these are today, uh, let's say, even though FAA is a regulatory body primarily in the United States, but due to uh, its reputation and position, a lot of uh, countries in the world will look into the FAA regulation and put it as their own a regulation for their own systems. Um, so where do we stand with S4GA ALCMS? Even though we have to say that those systems are primarily focused on wire solutions, they have general requ requirements, and those requirements are all met by uh, S4G systems. So S4G ALCMS by design is complying with ADN, with AMIS 14, and with FAA regulations. Uh, we can go into a more discussion on type C and D of, uh, of the monitoring system, but uh, it's not the purpose of today's presentation. Another slide, just to highlight one more fact, uh, is here is focusing on the hardware. Um, when you look at this slide, you'll see here that we have FAA, and FAA regulates the hardware, so the requirements for the equipment to be used quite well. Um, but before going to that, I just want to mention one more point. 
and that is the requirement for um, uh, European Parliament. So S4GA is really based in Europe and uh, therefore the European regulations are, uh, are addressing or affecting S4GA equipment. And as you can see, there's quite a number of standards that uh, hardware equipment must meet in order to be used uh, in the industrial environment itself. Now I will focus just on one particular uh, requirement. It's called a red directive. As many of you quite often asked S4GA, how is it possible that S4GA can be safely used uh, in the environment of the airport? We are not speaking about uh, about um, uh, the environment that is, of course, uh, regulated, and you would uh, be uh, worried about the potential interface, uh, sorry, interface of the. Uh, radio signal with the existing nav aids or communication aids in the airport. So all this is taken care of by RED directive. It's called Radio Equipment Directive. And if an equipment is in line with this directive, then in fact, it is approved to be used in the industrial environment, airport environment too. And uh, S4GA equipment is in compliance with this, it's certified and can be safely used in the airports. So just to summarize, on the compliance, S4GA are also in the compliance with all those mentioned here regulations. And again, I will stop here. If any of you would like to have more in depth uh, or even want to see this table and uh, I can share it after the presentation. Now, I will go to a subject that is a most important subject for everyone today to um, be on the same page when talking about wired and wireless primary systems. So let me jump into the subject. And this will be a, a matter important for everyone to uh, comprehend in order to follow up the latest stage of the presentation. Simple diagram. And so I will start with a short reminder of the basic concept of the uh, control in the AGL system. Most airports worldwide will have this installed uh, in the premises. In short, you will have a control signal. So that's the green part here. A control signal that is sent by a control cable to a CCR. And this uh, CCR will energize the circuit and the light switch on. Uh, sorry. So just on this topic. Um, just a, a general comment, don't uh, criticize me for a simple uh, diagram uh, here. Uh, we omitted uh, on purpose uh, the insulating transformers, secondary and primary cables, just to see the concept. ATC sends the tower from the tower using LCMS, press a button, signal is sent to the CCR. The CCR switch on and to the selected brilliancy the lights switch on so you have the circuit that is coming back to the ccr so when we are speaking about the cable here a cable uh, that is running the circuit in series the cable serves two purposes it serves the power purpose and the control purpose what i what i'm exactly meaning is that in the same cable that is running and illuminating the light and uh, the electricity is flowing, so that means the lights are illuminating, but it is also modulated uh, by the CCR to flow and give the expected brilliance. This part is important. I'm, I'm uh, especially talking about it because it will be important in a moment to understand the difference to S4GA system. So again, in a wired system, you have the control is dependent on the power. If there is no power, basically the CCR is not powering the circuit, then there is no control, as simple as that. But it is a little bit different in S4GA. So now, on the right hand side, you see the S4GA runway lighting. Same, exactly the same way, like in the wired system, the ATC controller generates the control signal and the signal is sent to the fixtures, to the light fixtures. Now, the 
One major difference that you can already see from the graph, from the diagram, is that the, there is no CCR. Basically, the signal is sent directly to the lens. So when we are talking about uh, the green arrows here, they are actually the same green arrows as they are coming from the tower in a wired solution to the CCR. But here, the signal is sent directly to the light fixtures. We call it a radio network signal. Now, the radio network signal, uh, sorry, circuit, is uh, control only. So if you think about it, the power is not in a cable, of course, because there is no cable. The power is inside the lights. And when we are sending the control signal, we are just sending the uh, signal uh, that relates to control. And what are the differences in the circuit when we are talking about S4GA, a radio circuit, to a conventional circuit? The circuit uh, is mm, basically flexible. So when you think about it, this is uh, a, a circuit that is um, not fixed. It's not depending on any physical characteristics of the cable. So you, there is nothing laid down in the ground. It's all in the air. It's all. Um, it's all. Um, closed in a circuit, the radio circuit, that um, is independent of the condition of um, media, which is in a wired system, the cable. So by saying that, I would like to now show you a short um, scenario with the potential failure. And, and now maybe the difference will be even better visible. So if the power source fails, in a conventional system, and now, now disregarding interleaving circuit and backup generators, I'm just talking about basic principle. If you have a failure of a, um, of a power source, you basically lose uh, the ability to control. And because, like I said before, the control is dependent on the power in a wired system, you are losing the ability to control the lights. That's it. You can even have an operating still ALCMS in the tower, but pressing a button will not change anything. The system is out. Now, seeing the same scenario in S4GA system. So if you have a failure of the power, which, as I said before, the power is inside the light because the light is equipped with an individual power bank, then it will impact the circuit but the control will be still remain because the circuit is dynamic, it's flexible. It is uh, changing and rerouting automatically. And each light works as transmitter and retransmits the signal further. So even though the original uh, circuit, radio circuit in S4GA will change, it will not affect so the failure of the power in one of the lights would not affect the overall control of the system. And this is one of the reasons why S4GA has world safest system. So ability to control um, and to regain, uh, sorry, to keep the control over the system is much higher than in conventional system. I will now show you another slide uh, just visualizing a little bit better to what I just tried to explain. So an airport layout, a signal is transmitted from the AC, ATC tower to the nearest light. Now, each light is transmitting the signal further. The process takes about one second, and this I will show you in a video close to the end of the presentation and the signal reaches every light in the system and the uh, system illuminates. The process takes about one second, actually it's less than one second. Now, uh, another point to take is the uh, subject of 
um, a system that S4GA provides and the available on the market systems uh, called point to multipoint. Even though a radio system is a radio system, is theoretically, we are talking about a solution that is comparable, but there are different logics of radio systems available on the market. And point to multipoint is, is this type of system that in uh, S4GA opinion is not the best fit for uh, human input. And I explain why. So first of all, the control has to directly connect with each light to the airport. It's called uh, line of sight. So basically the controller must be in line of sight with every light that he wants to illuminate. But the signal has a limited distance. And of course, the radio uh, signal can have a limited distance. So if you have the inability um, to reach the light, you will cause the lack of the control. So you can have some of the lights illuminating, some of them not. Uh, what to mention is that the radio reception changes with humidity and with weather conditions. So having just one controller uh, that is not um, repeating uh, the, the signal, so the signal is not repeated by the other lights, as you can see on the drawing, the lights, they do not communicate to each other, it can lead to a situation where some of the lights uh, do not illuminate which is, of course, not a, a situation you want to encounter. Now, with S4GA, the same concept, um, same radio transmitter in a tower, but very different radio network. The network that actively connects to each other. And as you can see, each of the lights here on the drawing is basically receiving the signal at least from two or three sources. This is giving the solid the radio uh, reception and this is proving that the um, communication in order to lose the communication you would need to really um, lose multiple lights and uh, this practically is uh, close this probability is close to zero when speaking about this 4g system now um, we are more or less half of the time I will start to explain you the components, the elements of the S4GA AGL system, which are the heart of the system, a hardware, a control unit called UR201, control and monitoring unit, that is typically installed in a tower or a maintenance room. Then we have the software installed in a workstation uh, in the tower, or you can have another one installed uh, in the maintenance uh, room for the maintenance desk. And the backup control, I will talk about it more at the end of the presentation. I will now will give you a quick guide through the hardware, through the equipment that uh, S4GA um, offers in order to run a LCMS system. Switch button on off, pretty straightforward. Then in our control unit, we will have three groups and the manual switches, let's say old fashioned manual switches that will allow you to control three groups independently. Those groups can be controlled in different operating modes from steady flashing, dust till dawn, NVG or remote. The remote activation is possible via ARCAL so via VHF, but also via GSM. Then you have some status indicators and intensity control. In our uh, control uh, and monitoring unit, the basic control three steps is available. The, the last part here is the timer. The last knob is the timer for the remote activation. So if you have the lights remotely activated, from the tower uh, coming when the signal is coming from the control unit, mm, they will switch off after a certain amount of time. Uh, what I would like to highlight here is that each group can be controlled individually. And uh, maybe some of you would think, this is good enough for me. And that's true. We have customers where they do not purchase ALCMS. They just purchase this system, the control and monitoring unit. And for their requirements of a relatively small airport, this is good enough. 
So in some cases, uh, this constraint can be uh, sufficient. Most important, it can be later upgraded to ALCMS um, software. This is not a limitation. And now, so what's inside? Industrial microcomputer, ah, not a surprise. GSM module for the remote activation, VHF module for the remote activation, the antenna ports where you would connect the VHF and S4GA antennas. The lightning arrestor is a part of the protection system. Now, USB port and LAN port uh, that are used for the communication between the control unit and the workstation, also used for integration with external systems. I will talk about it a bit more later on. Power supply units, straight forwards, backup power source. The unit is equipped with a battery that allows for 30 minutes of operation, sorry, 30 hours of operation in case of main grid failure. The control unit is typically connected to 230 or 110 volt uh, system. And in case this system uh, fails, the unit will still continue operating on battery only for up to 30 hours. Circuit breaker like with any electrical equipment. And now, for the first time, my pleasure to present you the Generation 2 ALCMS. Um, I think many of you has, have came so far with the presentation, managed to listen to me uh, until now, but I think it was worth it. Now, I will briefly go through the major parts of the ALCMS that you can see here. This is uh, an actual customer, an actual uh, implementation, and the system, uh, the, so it's a customized system for uh, the customer requirements. Now, quickly through the functionalities, for many of you, this is uh, well known um, because the ALCMS is, this is the standard one you would see in many of your uh, applications. The warning notification section, very important part, regulated tightly by the FAA. Uh, you, you need to have a lot of um, information regarding the status of the system. You need to have the historical data. You need to have the logs. All this is provided with S4GA system. Uh, here, the bar presents, of course, the most important uh, messages for the user the, with the highest priority. And of course, the messages are prioritized. Uh, a menu. For monitoring, control, hardware, and notifications, they are the most important um, uh, sections. And typically, the control and notifications would be used by the ATC. Monitoring and the hardware will be used by the, uh, by the maintenance. But of course, uh, they all can be compiled into one big, um, one, one ALCMS. Then the availability of historical logs. You can also do a screenshot of the current system in case you need it. The system can be switched to a, a night or day set uh, uh, colors. And here you have the airfield layout. I think it's self-explanatory. Approach lights, runway 0826. Here we have right now uh, activated runway 26 with the threshold, puppy and approach lights. Uh, also, we can see the taxiway lights or the taxiways depicted on the drawing. It's custom made. So for individual customer, this drawing is always made from scratch. Then the circuits or the groups, how we call it in S4GA, uh, and the control of them is here, plus and minus uh, five step. In S4GA, we can even have more than five step and the steps can be also customized. customized. So we have uh, quite an ability um, in uh, giving the product exactly to the customer needs. Now, let's, I'm just showing you where I'm going. Now I'm, I'm jumping into the monitoring section. And one thing that you may have not noticed is on the previous slide, maybe I will just show you. There is no difference here to a conventional system. Here, if you would put a, a ATC controller, he would not notice any difference the system that he's used to. Uh, so he wouldn't even recognize that this is a control and monitoring system for the solar autonomous system. But this will be already visible in the monitoring section. Starting with 
charging efficiency. So charging efficiency is a unique feature that uh, here is showing the uh, this charging efficiency for the entire system. And this is used by the uh, operator to understand what charging uh, speed of the system, of the current speed of the system is, and used for the maintenance action, of course. And we have it at the level of the entire system, but we also have it at the level of individual light. So any damage of the solar panel, or even the solar panel being dirty. I'm not even talking about that the system will report automatically when the charging efficiency drops below a certain number. So you can identify it to a single light, or you can know that the entire system requires cleaning. So this question is quite often asked, how often do you need to clean the solar? And with ALCMS, the, the answer is simple, when the system it tells you to do. Later, system indicative state, status indicators, they are most important and critical uh, components of the system. They must be okay in order for the system to run smoothly. And this information is provided here. And now I'm jumping into the monitoring of individual group. Now, here is an example of a torch zero eight. And we have a list of lights. This, in fact, is not the full list of the, um, of the data available for the system. It's just the selected ones that the user wants to see. So it's a customizable group. Individual light status, all the lights, and now a light that is perfectly fine. Going from the left side, you can see here it's online, so that means the system is in connected connection. The mode, the light is on, illuminating, the battery level is 60%, and then we can track the battery A and battery B. In this case, uh, the battery A is okay, and the system is detecting the faults. So whenever you would have a fault of the battery, the system would inform you about it. Temperature and the date of the, um, of the actualization. Here, time to charge. So this uh, light uh, needs one hour, 23 minutes to charge at the current conditions, the current outside conditions. If you'd like to see more details, you, you would click more details. And I will go there in a moment. So now, this is in fact the full available information from the uh, light fixtures itself. You have, I just discussed the part of them, but let's see here further. Time to discharge, 360 hours. So this particular light in particularly uh, used condition as it is right now, so on a setting that it is right now, it will be discharging for 360 hours. That tells me this. So there's no charge. Also the charging efficiency is zero, so that makes sense. Then we would have the emergency button The emergency button uh, visibility, I will talk about the emergency button in the end of the presentation. And very important, time to replace the battery and remaining charge cycle. These two are uh, information uh, that is required for uh, the knowledge of the user about the health status of its system, and especially of the batteries inside the light, because the batteries as a uh, I'd say fuel in a car, they require to be replaced every couple of years or every set of charge cycles. And both of those are monitored individually for each individual light. And the system will, of course, uh, notify a warning whenever the, either the time or the cycles are limiting, are coming to the limit. The last uh, part here, or the last uh, sorry, indicator, will be the lamp is moving. It actually is a, a movement sensor and it is addressing uh, an issue that can happen in some of the um, airports that are not fenced. And we experienced a situation that basically the lights can be stolen. The information about a potential um, situation is directly sent to the user and he can actually react in real time. It's a unique feature of S48. Now, I uh, described just the, uh, another type here that is an offline, which means something is wrong. So you have a light that has failed, and you will have the information in the system. The system will give you uh, basically the information, the last date of the information, and you know you have to react. You know which is the number. 
but it seems that my internet connection was uh, broken. Okay. Okay. So I will continue. Backup control for AS4GA ALCMS. I will speak scenario by scenario, and then I will show you a short movie uh, presenting what I mean. In S4GA system, you will have um, four areas where you can uh, keep the control over the uh, system in terms of the failure. So I will start with the scenario number one. You have a failure of the uh, touch screen in the tower. The controller cannot use it anymore because the failures and um, the failure has occurred. So what are the options of the controller? He can actually use the control unit that is installed in the tower and use the knobs. Of course, the functionality is limited, but the control is still uh, gained. So you can still select the uh, group and you can st still select the uh, intensity, switch on and off the lights in the, in the airport. What happens if this unit would fail? In this case, a uh, user can use a, a handheld controller it's a it's a equipment that can be provided to the user and um, it allows for five groups of control and three intensity steps the last possible um, the last possible option in case in case you would not have the handheld controller available is the emergency button what is emergency button it's a last resort it allows for the user to go on the site, I mean, in case of the entire failure of the entire system and without any handheld controller available, you have a, a button on each individual light that in case you press, you will basically have the lights illuminate the same way they would illuminate from the control. Just a brief uh, visualization of the uh, of the control unit, uh, sorry, of the handheld controller, the intensity selection, special modes, because this uh, is also often used by the military. So the NVG and night vision goggles uh, option is used, and then the five groups. How would it look in practical terms? See the video. This is just a military presentation. And actually what we see here is a portable puppy. And now the real time activation of the lights. Could you see, I will, I will maybe rewind it just for you to all so you can see the speed at which the lights are activating. Remember I, at the beginning of the presentation, I said it's one second, below one second. Have a look. This is the speed and this is not a time lapse. As you can see from the puppy, halogen puppy that is activating and now deactivating the system and the halogen puppy deactivates much slower because the halogen is not as reactive as LED. So we are speaking about that speed. And here on the video, maybe I run it once more, we are having a 2.5 kilometer runway. And this is S4GA system. This is how emergency button would be used in practical terms. I'm not sure if you had seen, but the lights uh, activate instantly. Last two slides. Um, we have been several times, or maybe even more than several times asked, can we integrate uh, S4GA ALCMS to existing uh, ALCMS installed uh, in the tower already and controlling a wired systems. The short answer is yes, we can do it. It's possible. Um, we can do it via LAN or it also can be done via uh, RS232 uh, connector. Um, it requires a certain open protocol from the existing supplier of the wired ALCMS, uh, but it is possible. The second question that we often hear, can we control with S4G ALCMS? Um, can we deliver a system that would incorporate a solar uh, and wired um, system, wired lights, 6.6? 6 
And in short, yes, we can. And the system can actually integrate the, both technologies in one software. To summarize, S4GA system is in compliance with existing ICAO, FAA, and other multiple regulations uh, that regulate this area of the airport infrastructure. Details to be provided upon questions, a big topic and not possible to cover today. Very important, we have control independent from power supply. If the power is in the light and we are just managing the control and the system is working in mesh network, mesh network provides very stable and redundant solution. Because the lights receive the signal, the activation signal from multiple sources, therefore the probability of losing is very low. S4GA has a unique individual light monitoring available with the type D SMGCS a type of ALCMS systems and we actually even exceed those uh, recommendations or requirements because we provide more information uh, to the user than uh, even required by FAA. Now S4GA has delivered, has, sorry, has developed a tailored solution that is addressing the needs for the solar uh, applications. We have the charging efficiency, we have the discharge time, we have the charge time available on the system level, on the light level, allowing the, con the user, the tower, the maintenance people to safely operate the system. And integration with existing AGL control systems already operating in the field is also possible. Details, of course, to be discussed, uh, but most important, uh, this is actually technically viable. So thank you for this uh, presentation. It took me a bit longer than I anticipated. Now we'll, for one minute, run a short uh, poll and I'm ready for the questions and I will jump into the questions uh, in the chat. So I will jump now into the um, questions. Okay, I can see Dimitri already uh, starting, uh, started to answer part of the questions. So I will just jump into the questions which were yet not answered. Who are the competitors of S4GA worldwide and what is our uh, standing in the competition? Mm, so it's a quite general question. All the suppliers of airfield ground lighting is S4GA competitors worldwide. Um, and what is our standing in the competition? Hmm. Uh, maybe I will pass on answering this question because uh, I, I think it will be a biased answer. So, um, I think our position is pretty good, but I will maybe um, I will maybe stop on this one. Uh, by Dimitri. Sorry for that. He's already given the answer. Okay. Is it possible to use interface? with existing solar AGL system with other manufacturers? I think the answer was given in the, uh, in the presentation. In short, yes. What is the non-distortion guarantee for the military base in signals? Um, uh, the frequency, let me just, uh, frequency 868 megahertz. The question is, I'm trying to read the question and trying to understand the question quickly. So give me a second. I think the question is generally about the safety. I understand it as a safety on the radio operation of the system uh, in regards to, for example, ILS or other nav aids like VOR, NDBs, or even VHF communication. So the short answer is the system is immune and it's first immune because it's operating on a different frequency than any other uh, system that is operating in the airport. So it's, a, it's not the frequency that Mm, either ILS or VOR or NDB would operate. 
Second of all, uh, this um, uh, actually this frequency when we talk about 868, S4GA can also provide it with 2.4 gigahertz. So we have an option to uh, select the frequency that is more most desired by the user in case he would not uh, be looking at 868 as a primary frequency for his use. Um, S4GA frequency uh, uh, protocol, communication protocol is encrypted with one to eight bit uh, encryption protocol and authentication protocol. So it's quite often used by the military and uh, these are the military requirements set. I'm not sure if I have answered the question because I'm not 100% sure if this was the question, but if, if, if I didn't, please ask again uh, at the bottom. Now, um, I'm looking at the next one from, I mean, how does continuous temperature exceeding 45 degrees centigrade affect the battery life and performance? Okay, very good question. So 45 degrees is hot. There's no question. It's not a desired oper operating temperature for the batteries inside the lights. So for that particular harsh conditions, uh, S4GA can offer a temperature with, uh, if I'm not mistaken, uh, that is specific specs operating temperature is between plus 80 and minus 40. They are specially designed uh, batteries to withstand those harsh conditions. But in, in a nutshell, of course, um, higher temperature degradates battery. So the standard battery has between minus uh, 20 to plus 50. Uh, range, temperature range. And of course, if it would be operating all the time in 45 degrees, it would degrade to a certain extent. And this is exactly why S4G ALCMS provides the information on the battery health. This is exactly why um, we are monitoring this information in order to know when to replace the battery. So what about the question. humidity? What about the humidity? Mm -hmm. You're only talking about the temperature, not yes. about the humidity. Can you write the question and I'll reply? Okay. Uh, uh, so, okay, I'll reply it immediately. The humidity is not affecting the batteries inside the lights because the lights are encapsulated and they are uh, IP67. So there is no humidity inside the light and the batteries are operating in dry environment. Next question, is it possible to use your control system units for conventional system? Yes. Uh, are the control units available separately to be installed, for example, in the pit as dedicated control unit for the lights? Are the control units available separately? I'm not sure I understand the second part of the question. Can you try to ask it again? Do I see, uh, no, I'm looking at Mohammed uh, um, question. Do I see at some point in time in the future wireless solar system can replace wired um, for the higher category airports? I see that the market will definitely change in the next five to 10 years. I see the solar uh, autonomous solutions who are entering uh, very bold um, to the, uh, let's say to the market that previously would be only accepting them as a temporary or um, let's call it non very serious uh, applications. Uh, I'm not sure uh, if we are talking about replacement of the sort of let's say of wide solution uh, up to category two or three because there are still some certain technical limitation, but I think today uh, the solar systems can be already used up to category one and safely operated under category one on certain types of airports. It's another big topic, so I'm not gonna talk uh, too long, but Mohamed, if you want, you can contact me and I will explain in more details. Uh, Fernando, for small airports, can your 201 control unit be powered uh, fully via solar panel? Uh, yes, it can. How is the interface uh, to other system? In short, there is no interface, uh, sorry, uh, interference. There is no interference to the other systems. Mm, and uh, I'm also speaking from the experience of 100 plus, 120 plus projects. And uh, if we ever had a situation of interference, no, we didn't. At which airport is already implemented the system? 
I think the, the list would be pretty long. I don't remember by heart uh, all of them, but I can buy uh, from the recent projects tell you that it was implemented in uh, Greece International Airport. Um, in uh, Ethiopia, uh, there's two regional airports that uh, installed the system. Uh, I, honestly, it's uh, difficult for me to quickly give you the answer, but if you write me an email, I, I can send you all the list of the projects. Of course, uh, quite a number of uh, useful information about our existing application can be found on our website. And you also can see case studies of installed systems. Uh, how do they look actually uh, after the installation? And I think this could be also very useful information. Okay, okay. Um, can you, yes. Can you stop the mute? Can you mute and can you write the questions so I can? Uh, because if everyone starts speaking, I won't be able to uh, to answer the questions anymore. Can you do me a favor? Um, okay. Can you repeat it? I didn't get it. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, next question. In CAT 2 or CAT 3 civil airport, which kind of S4G product would you suggest for the monitoring of a stop bar and lead on? So when you're talking about CAT 2, CAT 3, we, I would only be able to offer from S4G portfolio uh, the ALCMS, but I would not be able to offer you a, um, an airside equipment. So in principle, CAT 2 and CAT 3 airports are not really in the focus of S4G today. S4G is listed manufacturer in FAA. Um, no, it is not to buy knowledge. Have you already installed S4G ALCMS? Please give an example project. Uh, the one I mentioned before, uh, we installed it in Greece uh, in Thessaloniki International Airport. It has been operating there since two years. Uh, we installed it as well in um, in the Jigjiga airport in Ethiopia. It's been there and operating since about one year. Um, so, yes, the answer is yes, we installed it and there is actually a, num a numerous of projects. Another one that comes to my mind is in um, Maldives. Uh, it's a regional airport, also operating uh, ALCMS. What is the transmission power? Uh, it's 16 milliwatts. So the transmission power of the radio signal used by S4G is 16 milliwatts. Is it applicable for any airport, whether it's small or large airport? In short, yes. It, in reality, we are serving an airport up to category one precision approach. Is it possible to install only the control system to the conventional not S4G AGL system lines, like a conventional 6.6, but instead of using power line communication, using the advantage of the radio mesh? The answer is in short, yes. It would require a certain uh, development, but um, yeah, this is a kind of a project that would require a more, more in-depth analysis, but technically it would be viable. Does the wireless, uh, sorry, do you have inset lights? S4G provides a solution uh, of the inset light powered uh, by autonomous solar engine. So the answer is in short, yes. Does the wireless solution, including mesh, available in inset fixtures or only elevated fixtures? So it's like um, a previous uh, question, um, but a little bit more in depth. Yes, S4GA is providing an inset lights that are powered from the solar engine and it can be wireless controlled. What is the charging process? Does it charge while it's operating? Yes, it's charging while it's operating. It's also charging with non-operating. S4GA has a unique rapid charging technology that allows for extremely fast charging. Uh, comparing to any available on the market solution, S4 GLs are charging about, about three times faster. And this is a combination of the solar panel, the uh, inverter, uh, and, and let's call it a software which is built into the lights. Um, so we have, let's say, 
a fully charged light on a sunny day uh, by average of 12 hours that would allow for another two or three hundred hours of operation. So the charging speed is really, really fast. How much voltage? Uh, the, the units are operating on 12 volts. So it's nothing comparable to the high voltage systems, wired systems that uh, we are used to. The lights are in fact a low voltage units. Even the high intensity lights uh, from S4GA uh, are operating on 12 volts. Can S4GA CMS system uh, used for other solar lighting systems? Uh, to my knowledge, no. What is the impact of quality of sun at the in the performance? What is the impact of quality of sun in the performance? Ah, you mean, uh, you probably mean in how is the charging changing with the, with the changing weather conditions? Of course, changing weather conditions are changing the efficiency of the charging. But uh, the, there is another presentation explaining the concept of 365 days operation of the, uh, of the S4G system. And um, it's actually one hour uh, presentation. So maybe uh, I would like to answer this question right now, but it will take a long time to, to put you on the same place. In short, the S4G system is designed to operate 365 days solely on solar and is able to do that due to certain technical advancement that it, it has, but it's all explained in the presentation. So I, I advise you to jump into the YouTube S4G channel, actually not only you, but everyone. And, um, and basically see uh, the presentation 365. How much distance um, has, has the sig signal limit? In a mesh network, there is no limit. We have been equipping an airport where the distance between the tower and the further uh, equipment was about five kilometers. So uh, when you have a mesh network and the signal is retransmitted, there is no limit of the signal. Uh, how lighting affects the system? Um, can you rephrase the question? Because I, I really didn't understand. Okay, I have noticed I missed some additional questions. So as no one is asking, I'll just uh, go to them. Is it possible to use interface with the existing solar system? Okay, I already answered this uh, several times. Can the lights be turned on by incoming aircraft? Yes, the system has ARCAL uh, uh, compatibility. So it can be switched on using just uh, onboard radio from the plane and from the helicopter. Now, I have seen the presentation and my understanding is that the solution is good for Southern Hemisphere countries. Is there any cha uh, change to your solution? No, it's not good only for the uh, Southern Hemisphere. It's actually the most Northern application that S4G has done until now is in Yukon. It's actually uh, North Canada. So uh, it's not the question of where this airport is located. It's a question of the balance of the energy. So Adil, I will again send you to the presentation of 365 days that is uh, uploaded to the YouTube. When you, when you watch it, you will understand that in fact, there is no limitation for the solar operation. Is the question how extensively you want to use it in the airport and how big traffic are you expecting to have? If this is 24 seven operation, and yes, we would be mostly talking about around equatorial uh, location. But if we are speaking about regional domestic airports operating relatively small traffic, it's not an issue to have the system operating uh, continuously uh, for 365 days. 
Could you please have a file consolidating all the questions and answer because all of them are very informative? Yes, we'll do this. Thank you for this question. What is the maximum distance from the ATC to the nearest light? Uh, by the design, it's about two kilometers. What about light failure notification in ALCMS? So the ALCMS provides a, a palette of notifications of failures regarding the lights. As you have seen in the presentation, there is a se separate monitoring window that you can identify uh, a light, the type of the fault, and you can immediately know which light has, uh, has has this fault, and you can send the maintenance team to fix the um, the solution. Sorry, to fix the light. Is this all questions? I think I have run over the time a little bit with answering the questions. Okay, last question. In case of a military airport, what about the security of the signal? The signal is encrypted uh, with the 128-bit um, protocol, and the signal uh, has authentication also. And actually, by now, is being used in multiple military applications worldwide. US uh, troops use it. Um, it's also used in the conflict zones right now, as we speak. Uh, so it's actually, it's a, I would call it quite um, a favorite product for the military application. And we have a number of them. Uh, if you go to our website, you will uh, see what I'm talking about. Also, several case studies to see what we can do for the military application. Okay, I'll try to answer uh, those three last questions and uh, we'll close the, the presentation. What is the type of battery we use? We have a choice. Now, we have a standard battery that's going to be a lead acid AGM battery. We have a non-standard battery that could be lithium ion and live PO4. Uh, and they are uh, more expensive, but they have um, the ability to be replaced uh, less frequently. The airport authority are still not confident on solar system. So how do we change the perception? I think the, the answer is very simple by doing those type of webinars. Do you have any case study to share? Yes, we do. Please visit our website. Um, there's plenty of case studies of projects we performed. Do we need airframe system to prevent failure from lightning strike? No, because the system is not connected to the grid. Thank you, everyone. That was the last question. Thank you for the for the time. Sorry for running outside the uh, one hour uh, limit. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I enjoyed it a lot. And uh, see you on the next webinar or uh, write you on the next webinar. Thank you very much. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for your time.